welcome. <coughs> Today we are going to discuss on the forms of leadership which have emerged till death and we will try to see what are the ethical implications of these leadership styles and like how engineers when they show this leadership style what are the challenges and what are the responsibilities which they need to take care of. The leadership styles that we are going to discuss today are transactional, transformational, empowering, ethical and authentic leadership style. <coughs> Along with that we will also again review the moral leadership. We will start with transactional leadership. So, according to Bass in the uh, in 1985, according to him, the it, transactional leadership is said to exist when changes in degree or marginal improvement can be seen as a result of a leadership that is an exchange process. A transaction between followers needs are met if in their performance measures up to their explicit or implicit contracts with their leader. So, what we see over here like when you are talking of transaction it is a like exchange process like the sometimes what happens leaders are expecting followers to deliver something according to their like the uh, goals that they have set for the followers. So, but it is equally important for the um, leader to see like to expect that performance from the followers like whether the followers needs are met or not. So, if the followers need are in which the followers needs are met if like the performance measures um, are up to the contracts with their leader, but again you see like the uh, leader it is a like when you are talking of employment contract and the psychological contract it is a both way expectation of the follower and the leader from each other about certain like um, uh, performance standards and it is a like and if you see any improvement in it like the in the ways of doing things in the ways things are getting performed then we talk of it, it is due to the it is due to the transactional leadership style. Transactional leadership represents those exchanges in which both the superior and the subordinate will influence one another reciprocally, so that each derives something of value. So, as we were already this is the definition given by Euclid like there is a like exchange of like expectations from each other and like also exchange of views with each other, ways of doing things with each other. So, and in that case um, what happens it is a like due to that process both are said to be value adding to each other's process that is the true meaning of when you are talking of transaction. Generally what happens in transactional leadership like there is one way communication between the followers um, and the leaders and the followers and the followers are given direction to complete the assigned task. So, if we take transactional leadership in this general way like when we talk of it is a one way communication and we to take it as like the leader gives the order and the follower needs to follow it then it does not encourage independent thinking on part of the follower then it is a, a performance with the focus and the rewards are based on the performance. 
then it is a less focus on developing the relationship and um, it is a resistance to change and focuses on maintaining the status quo and self interest is primary. But if we take it in the way like the uh, it is a two way transaction when you are talking of transaction it depends on how we are interpreting it. If we take it as an exchange of views exchange of like how to do things uh, between a follower and a leader it can also be used as a point of encouraging the creativity of the person and it can be used in terms of also learning from the um, followers. It may so happen like and this is very important as a leader and uh, like when you are talking of leaders and followers specifically with uh, relation to engineering practices and maybe for any other professions. So, it is very important to like keep oneself updated about the new findings. It may so happen like the leader is uh, knowledgeable enough and has wide experience about doing things, but he or she may, may not be updated about the newer versions of things coming up, newer technologies coming up, which the maybe the junior engineer is more like updated about knows different ways of doing things. So, if we take it as a transaction which is only a one way communication between like what the direction comes from the leader and the follower has to follow it, then the it gives less of encouragement to the uh, juniors to tell something and like come to a discussion mode it is like uh, only carrying out orders and sticking to the performance standards which is given by the uh, leader. But if it is a two way transaction then what happens then it helps in developing the uh, setting standards like performance even if you are focusing on uh, task and we are setting standards for the task or we are going to set standard for the product. If there is a two way transaction between the uh, uh, leader and the follower regarding what are the expected qualities and what are the ways of doing things, then that can be like a uh, more updated version. Second is when you are talking of uh, transaction there is a deeper meaning to transaction also. So, when you talk uh, specifically with relevance to suitability of transactional leadership for promoting ethical conduct is if you are taking it in the sense like the followers learns from the leaders and do, uh, does what the leader tells the follower to do, then it is the um, very important responsibility of the leader to be on the correct on the ethic to be right on the ethical path. Because if that person himself is or herself is not following something not doing something then he or she cannot tell the juniors to do it cannot expect the juniors to do it also. So, be, again because it is a reciprocating kind of thing then if um, the uh, per if the leader is telling the junior to perform to a certain standard, the juniors also will expect, the followers also will expect like they are given enough resources, they are given enough freedom to perform to meet the particular standard. So, when you are talking of transactions, transaction is like about uh, it is a process uh, to meet certain objectives. So, when the like we are to meet the objective of a quality de delivery, then it is uh, not only that one way transaction which is important, but it is a two way transaction which is also important because I cannot expect something from the followers if I do not try to understand what are their needs like what do they need what like 
resources should be given to them uh, before we try to expect something from them. And if like they are suggesting something for the uh, like improvement, then are we open to take those suggestions or not. So, that will like um, further may lead to are we open to those uh, suggestions. So, that may eventually lead to like employee giving suggestions, employee giving referrals. Otherwise, it may what happen if they feel like even if I tell something, it is not going to be heard. At the end of the day, it is the leader's word which is the last word. Then they will obviously come to that conclusion, what do I get by telling something in a like this can be done in a more um, uh, like maybe cost effective way in a better way what 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 do I get out of it so if, but if it is a two way transaction then the the recognition that you get the and the is when you see your suggestions getting implemented of course motivates you for a better performance so we have to see how we understand the meaning of transactions. Transformational leadership, such leaders do things to revitalize and transform organizations and society. Transformational leadership depicts an approach by which leaders motivate followers to identify with the organization's goals and interests and encourage them to perform beyond the expectations. Key characteristics of transformational leaders are charisma. They inspire others to follow them in a highly emotional manner. Self-confidence, highly confident of their ability and judgment and others readily become of this, become aware of this by observing the conduct of the transformational leaders. Transformational leaders are generally called to be visionary leaders because when you are talking of transformation changes, we are trying to see a new like we want to see our organization in a new light, we want to see it how it is going to be there in future. So, it acts to be a lot of reflective thinking a vision. So, they have the ideas about how the status quo in the organizations can be improved. So, they have a commitment to do. So, what it takes to change things for a better even it, it means making personal sacrifices. So, transformational leaders are visionary leaders who want to see the better version of the organization, who want to see a better image of the organization and in that maybe if they are ready to make uh, personal sacrifices for it also. So, um, they, they have a very high environmental sensitivity because they understand the constraints that are imposed on them they know what they can do and they cannot do also within a given framework. Intellectual simulation, so they help followers to recognize the problem and encourage creative ways of resolving these problems. Interpersonal con consideration and individualized attention, so they give followers the support, encouragement, attention that is needed each of the followers individually the task to execute the task that is given to them. Morality, transformational leaders carry high levels of moral reasoning while taking all the important decisions that may affect the followers as well as the organizations at large. So, when what we find over here is like when you are uh, discussing on transformational leaders, we are focusing on a leadership style which is um, uh, like a more visionary who thinks of the future and who thinks for the betterment of the organization even at the cost of personal sacrifices. But here one question may come which is definitely 
of priority setting. There are there will be stakeholders and here we see organizational goal and the um, objectives of the organization and the main like pivot around which the transformational leadership um, rotates and it uh, like and it moves in the way like it tells the followers to identify with the organizational goals and like be inspired to move forward towards like the revamping the organization giving it a new face th thinking how it can do things in a different way how like it can be a better place to work in so if those things are there and like maybe how the organization may for engineers it's how maybe like the better contribute towards the uh, maybe welfare of the and well well being of the people at large because it is one of their major major professional ethics so in that uh, thinking about the organization sometimes we have to prioritize our like the uh, conflicting needs of the different stakeholders also starting from oneself it may so happen like the self sacrifice of certain things uh, certain asp like aspirations also priorities also are required like if you're talking of like whether i think of my self interest or the interest of the organization so sometimes it may come come to make a choice between like the thinking in the on behalf of the organization and the public at large or responsible to the um, employee so and it, you may need to uh, take a decision regarding this when mainly comes to maybe when you're talking of redesigning the organization for the purpose of certain things so whenever we're talking of redesigning restructuring the organization somewhere we find like the organizational objectives and the per personal objectives of the um, employees present in the organization may not be like matching with each other and like you may have to sacrifice the um, your personal self interest or interest of the some of the employees in order to like make your organization uh, ready for the greater objective so when you're talking of transformational leaders these are some of the characteristics and like these are some of the dilemma points with respect to the um, ethical issues that you may having like um, can we like sacrifice a person like person's um, right for something right to work maybe uh, for the better interest of our organization so if we are doing if you are doing so maybe uh, we can justify it from the utilitarian perspective like whatever you are doing is in the greater interest of the public at large and there the that is what is the benefit you are getting and the cost may be uh, like uh, reducing a number of persons from your organization so if that is so then that is one way of understanding it but if we take a caring approach towards the whole thing what we find like maybe we have to see the employability of these people make them maybe give them certain compensation so that even if they are not there with the organization the bond the relationship with the organization never dies out so how you take your approach and what nature like whether you are nurturing transformational leader or not it matters a lot into how you take a approach towards your like executing your vision empowering leaders empowering leaders is the leadership style in process where leaders share power with employees by providing additional responsibility and decision making authority over work and resources as well as support needed to handle the additional responsibility effectively so what we find over here in empowering leadership the leader shares the employees with additional not only responsibility and decision making authority but also the resources so that it becomes an enabler for the person to do the task it is not only enough that we share certain resources um, like share ideas or tell like you you are responsible and you can take your 
call on it, but it is equally uh, respond, it is equally important like um, you give the proper resources for the person to perform and empower that person to take decisions and also you agree or you say like whatever the person decides you tell like it is you support that it is your decision also. So, it is like um, when you are talking of empowering leadership it is one of those is leading by itself like example. So, if you are committed to your own work then you can expect your employees to be committed members also. So, it um, uh, talks of maybe working hard for your team's objectives. So, these kind of things are important whenever we are talking of empowering leadership, when you are talking of coaching. So, it is an act of educating your team members and help them to become self-reliant. This category include behaviors such as making suggestions about performance improvements and helping the team to be self-reliant. Also in empowering leadership, we have participative decision making. It is a use of team members information and input in decision making. So, it includes behavior such as encouraging team members to explain their ideas and opinions. The key characteristics of empowering leaders are first is informing means like disseminating of information com company wide such as the organization's vision, mission and philosophy. So, explaining company decisions to the team and informing the team about how the new developments in the organizational policy. Showing concern for the uh, team members well being. So, taking time to discuss the team members concerns. So, when you are discussing the suitability of empowering leadership from for promoting ethical behavior, it is a very important juncture to discuss about it. Because when you are talking of transactional leadership, whenever you are talking of transformational leadership, what we find the control is still in the leader's hand. Like when you whenever you are talking of transactional leadership, the leader is taking uh, giving his views on the performance standards and expectations and as a result of that transaction of like exchange of uh, duties and responsibilities is expecting certain performance from the follower and the final control is there with the leader to decide about it. When we are talking of transformational leadership also it is like the motivating the followers to like think about the organizational objectives first and making getting oneself prepared for it and moving uh, towards it. And so that like the organization uh, transforms and uh, gets a new shape, gets a new vision etcetera. But still here it is the leader with whom the ultimate decision of yes and no remains or the future perspective remains with the uh, leader. When we are talking of trans like empowering leadership, in true empowering leadership actually in self managed teams, the, it, it becomes a real like leaderless group, where the team members are empowered enough, knowledgeable enough to take their own decisions and move the team or the organization forward. And it is very, very important from the perspective of ethical leadership is when I empower you to do something, it is also in means I give you power, I give you authority alongside of that comes also the responsibility and accountability. If I am truly empowering you means I am giving you the authority to take decisions regarding certain things and in that case the person who is empowered needs to understand this authority is an immense responsibility that is given that needs to be reciprocated by like when you talk of accountability 
and responsibility. Also a point of caution over here like this empowering leadership style should not only be a lip service done where we find like people are empowered in order to so that it is a passing on the blame kind of thing. Like if I have empowered and empowered regarding what like maybe to take a decision about certain things and then it comes very logically to whom am I empowering is the person uh, competent enough to get empowered has the person capacity enough to get empowered or not. But if you are empowering people without making them understand their part of responsibility and accountability it may be a way of passing on the buck, it may be a way of putting away you washing your hands out of the as a leader from the responsibility of uh, doing something and acknowledging the like your part of maybe if something this is more evident when something goes wrong then who shares the blame for it. So, if you are doing as an empowering leadership we need to understand the risk part of it also and have we made people aware of the risk part have we trained them enough to take care of the risk or we are taking the strategy just to pass out the blame from other from us and we will tell like we were not the people who decided about it we were not the people who did did this thing it was others who were empowered to do it so what is your intention behind the in empowerment and how you are doing it is an important in terms of like promoting ethical behavior in the organization. <coughs> Next we will come to ethical leadership. Ethical leadership is defined as the demonstration of normatively appropriate conduct through personal actions and interpersonal relationships and the promotion of such conduct to followers through two way communication reinforcement and decision making. So, whenever you are talking of ethical leadership it talks of having certain norms, standard rules, standard operating processes. So, it is demonstration of normatively appropriate conduct through personal actions and interpersonal relationships and like the we to promote those conducts to follow as per norms go as per norms through two way communication reinforcement and decision making. The essence of ethical leadership is on serving others then uh, raises voice against unethical practices in the organization concerns about the followers goods and overall betterment of the organization. So, make sure like the rewards and penalties are levied fairly for ethical or unethical conduct. Focuses on justice in the organization. So, helps employees to raise their voice freely against unethical practices in the organization. So, ethical leadership is very much important for promoting ethical conduct because when you are talking of it talks of some set standards and rules and so it talks of really an institutionalized ways for um, pro promoting ethical conduct. So, in that case like the codes of ethics should be written in very details with all because from we, we can understand like with the changing nature of time and situations. So, the challenges in a particular situation may also become different and may demand like given the situation even other things remaining constant this is how we are going to behave. So, whenever we are talking of institutionalizing some processes. So, that for which we can refer to 
before we take a decision about the day-to-day uh, -day happenings and to take care of the codes like ethical conducts. So, it is very important to have a ethical leadership in place. Authentic leadership, then authentic leadership refers to um, a pattern of leader behavior that draws upon and promotes both positive psychological capacities and a positive ethical climate to foster greater self-awareness and internalized moral perspective, balanced processing of information and, my, and relational transparency on the part of leaders working with followers fostering positive self-development. So, whenever we are talking of authentic, it is a hint that we are getting through the main character traits which is coming out integrity, when you are talking of genuineness. So, um, genuineness in a concern, genuineness in a ways of doing things, genuineness in the way that we feel and behave. So, it talks of a relational transparency, it talks of a like um, balanced processing of information and it helps in lot of self development and positive uh, self development. Because if you are talking of integrity, then whatever may be conflicting situations may come to us, because the we like by the virtue of honesty and integrity remaining true to oneself will help us to choose our path, which will lead to a positive self development. Authentic leaders demonstrate five characteristics, like they understand their purpose, they, their core is based on solid values, they are leading from heart, they establish connected relationships and of course, they demonstrate self-discipline. So, when you are talking of genuineness, whenever we are talking of integrity, so there will be like um, situations of like greeds uh, spread all over and like uh, we can talk of these situations whenever we are talking of maybe you are into a project and you are the sanctioning authority, then th there could be other interested stakeholders which may be your project is not uh, interest, your project is not taking care of or it is um, or, or the uh, it, it talks of like that stakeholder may want to do a business by what it is not giving a good quality things. So, it may talk uh, like take the root of giving you gifts, bribes and other things. Then it talks of this integrity, genuineness, authentic leadership style, which helps you to stick to your vision, your understanding, your like um, genuineness and which is uh, important for whether he will irrespective of these like uh, things present in the situations where maybe you have a lot of temptation in terms of bribes and uh, gifts given to you, but as an authentic leader are you going to um, say yes to tho those things and uh, like because you know like ultimately the quality of goods and services that they are giving is not up to the mark as for the standards which is required for the product to be of high quality product. So, what you do in this case? So, authentic leadership talks like really focuses on that area, which talks of maintaining your integrity and like um, on um, taking have, having a lot of self discipline, because the gift given, the bribe given may be so much kind of attractive. There is a um, like uh, maybe a possibility that you fall into that trap, but 
in order to be an authentic leader, in order to be a person of integrity, it requires a lot of lot of self-discipline for the person to overcome this greed, uh, to like ignore this type of situations of greed and like be focused on the objective that which, which is given by the professional value system that like concentrating on the um, like safety and health issues of the people at large. We will be talking of moral leadership. According to Far et al, moral, moral leadership can be demonstrated in the workplace as a leader's personal integrity and selfishness, job devotion and leading by example. So, like Westwood identified two facets of moral leadership, role modeling and not acting selfishly. Moral leaders have uh, seven highly um, moral leaders have seven important characteristics like they have a strong ethical character, they have a passion to do right, they are morally proactive, they in, they are stakeholder inclusive means they take care of all the stakeholders before they think about any suggestions. So, they have an obsession with fairness and they are like principal decision makers, they go by certain values while making their decisions. So, it integrates like ethics of wisdom with the management wisdom. So, what we find over here like when you are talking of the value oriented leader, whenever we are talking of a moral leadership, we are talking of again fairness, we are talking of authenticity, we are talking of integrity, honesty in your purpose, in your ways of doing things and how you behave, how you talk and it like it is a principal decision making and it, it talks of giving like your, like how you move forward managing those things and the integrating ethics into ethics wisdom into the um, management wisdom like the like years and years of practice of ethics uh, understanding a particular situation understanding the pros and cons of it and then taking a particular decision about it, it like enriches you as a person and the management wisdom also enriches you the knowledge of like how to do strategic thinking, how to think of the people, how to think of the technology and how to think of the interpersonal relationship, how to work in a group. So, when you are talking of moral leaders, it tries to integrate these two uh, fields. So, that what whatever we do in that question consistency of our character, the mm, clarity of our knowledge and maybe openness of us to share things with others, knowledge with others and integrity comes to be important aspect of it. When you talk of the further essence of moral leadership, so it serves a common good, it is promoting personal and collective transformation and and conserving the and strengthening the unity of the group. So, carrying out those tasks for which the group was created. So, developing potential members for, for the group, these are like some qualities of moral leadership. And when you talk of um, uh, it is dispersed on many means because if this sense of integrity, this sense of contributing, this sense of like uh, like whatever temptation may be coming, I will stick to my path. This is an expectation which is like from all. So it is dispersed on many. So they are characterized by serving others. So, caring for others and it is a selfless, humble, 
listening because many problems are solved by proper listening. It may so happen because we have not heard things properly, we do not get the proper knowledge about it. So, listening then uh, reflective and persevering because if you are thinking of certain future things and you need to um, rethink about it, then you have to reflect on it to find out the other possible options for it. Moral leadership is very, very important for promoting ethical conduct because this sense of right and wrong, justice, fairness is an integral part of ethical discussion and that will come from the values, the principles that the person is following and when it comes to prioritizing, when it comes to maybe choice of vendors, it comes to selection of materials because we understand that engineering at each of the phases are very important. When you are talking of justice and fairness in the moral leadership and we are talking of being selfless also while you are thinking of these objectives will help us to focus on for on the beneficiaries for whose benefit are we talking of and how we can be, uh, how we can do certain things so that we are like on the right track, we are, we, it is evident like we are doing things fairly. So, the leadership styles that we have discussed over here, be it transformational leadership, be it uh, uh, transactional leadership, be it ethical leadership, moral leadership or authentic leadership. If you can understand through this discussion, uh, like if like when you are talking of transactional leadership, it is focusing on how you are exchanging your views with your um, juniors maybe how you are expressing how things will be getting done, how how maybe you are explaining your jobs uh, to your juniors and your expectations to them. Whenever you are talking of transformational leadership, you are talking of like understanding along with your juniors and making them understand of, of the objectives of the organization also how you want to see it to be contributing to the total development of the public at large. Whenever you are talking of empowering leadership, it is like uh, it is an like extended link of transformational and transactional leadership where you are empowering your um, new, um, new people to contribute positively towards enriching a particular domain, but it should be done in a proper way. The intention of empowering is very, very important that it, it should not be like I should become the scapegoat, your juniors should never be treated as scapegoat so that you are escaping some of your responsibilities and when it comes to blame sharing, you like the junior is the one who is pointed fingers at and maybe that is the person who uh, is getting caught under certain for maybe you know, like neglectful acts. So, when like we have discussed past such cases, so it is very important what is the culture of your organization, how you see your responsibility when you are empowering and if you are empowering then what are the resources that you are giving. When you are talking of authentic leadership and ethical leadership, <clears throat> both are very much linked with each other which talks of like fairness of practices and authentic leadership talks of the integrity of your character, genuineness. Whatever you are doing, however you are, you express your feelings in a genuine way, you express yourself, you express your comments in a genuine way so that people can trust you and know like this is how you are and this is how you behave and this is what they can expect from you. If you are changing yourself like too often and changing your like ways of doing things too often, changing your opinions maybe uh, too often based on like benefits which comes to like for your own self interest, maybe then you are not an authentic person, maybe the genuinity is somewhere is missing and maybe you 
you lose your trustworthiness. So, and when you're talking of ethical and moral leadership, we are talking of the fairness of the processes. And if if you are talking of to see how things are done, when you're talking of ethical leadership, you're talking of institutionalizing the processes so that you formulate some standard processes. So, if somebody is in a dilemma, somebody is in a crossroad, they can come and refer to those things and it more so it focuses on you leading by example. If in ethical leadership, the main focus is like you are leading by example. If you are telling someone to follow, telling someone to do something, then you must also be doing the same thing so that others can learn from you. Whenever we are talking of moral leadership, we find it is a part of our values which guide an obligation towards fairness to understand if like it is a moral responsibility to find to be to choose what is right and what is wrong and it may be a choice of the different stakeholders and like choice between self interest and like the interest of the organization groups interest, interest of the organization, interest of the organization and interest of the public at large. And when you are talking of moral leadership which is guided by values and these values could be your personal values and it could be your professional values also. It is a moral leadership style of the uh, engineers which helps you to understand what is right and wrong in a particular situation. So, it is an actually when we are discussing uh, leadership styles, trans, uh, transformational leadership is where you want your organization to uh, become, to how, we, how, how it should appear and what it should do in the next few years and become like what transactional leadership is how you exchange your processes of doing things with your team members. And when you are talking of authentic leadership, when you are talking of moral leadership, when you are talking of ethical leadership, this focuses on you as the person, the integrity of your character, the trustworthiness of person that you are, your thought process, your values which guides you to see how you want your organization to transform, to see how as a leader you are going to exchange your views with your uh, juniors as a part of two way transactions. So, that it not only it is not an expectation to them to perform, but you also take care of their needs and see like jointly you along with your team along with your organization all taken together are performing to the best interest of the whole society at large and it is a synergy which binds, which is a bond which develops between your professional expectations, your organization's expectations and your greater responsibility as a professional engineer to the safety, health and security of the public at large. Today is the concluding session of Ethics in Engineering Practice. Throughout the journey of this course, we have introduced you slowly to the concept of ethics towards the concept of why engineering is an important professional practice, the responsibilities of engineers as a professional person, the values of the engineers, the professional values, what are the conflicting situations the engineer may face as when like the em engineer is an employee of a particular organization. So, and if they have to handle dilemma over there. What are the responsibilities towards their environment? What is the responsibility in dealing with the digital world, in dealing with technology? And maybe we have discussed also like what is their responsibilities if they are designing something which are of nuclear like uh, involves technology, nuclear technology. We have also moved to the discussion slowly through like moving you through the discussion like if you are like a, uh, improving in an organization through your career ladder as from a junior engineer to a manager to a leader. So, what, what are your responsibilities when you are working as a 
junior employee, when you are working as a manager and when you are as working as leader, also we have considered like whether, if, like if in many cases, if you are functioning as a consultant, then what are the responsibilities of you as a consultant also. Hope you have enjoyed the sessions. Hope we have been able to give a extensive coverage to your queries and like which has maybe encouraged you to learn further. We this is the this being the last session, we will like encourage you to put your queries in the forum, which we'll be happy to answer and again share with you, or discuss with you our views, get your view, views from you, and we will be interacting in the forum. Thank you.